Yep, I'm actually starting on time. This is 20 Questions with Pastor Mike. This is my cat. Yeah, that's Moxie. You guys were calling out for her. I already saw in the live chat people demanding a Moxie appearance. So there she is. We are going to be taking your questions from the live chat today. The first one I have, though, is kind of special. It comes from a class, a sixth grade Bible class from Lansing Christian School in Lansing... Is it Michigan? I think it's in Michigan. Uh, Miss Fuller's class, Mrs. Fuller's class. And they want to know, back to me here, in Genesis, God destroys the world saying that the world has become unholy but saves Noah. Why couldn't he just do something bad to the people instead of doing all of the work to start over after the flood? You know, it, it, so the question is kind of like what the thumbnail showed on this video. If you saw that, it, you know, it's was the flood overkill? It was that kind of like, why, why not? Now, I, I, I always say something, and, and I'm going to, this answer is directed towards a, a middle school class, so I'm going to answer it slightly differently than if I would have answered it towards somebody else. But um, whenever we're asking, like, why did God do it this way, not that way, we're, we have to be just careful that we don't assume too much. Because, you know, when you look at God who knows all things, who has the whole plan for the whole universe and for every day of, of, of all, all of creation... And you ask, like, why didn't you do this or that? We, we never really have all the information like he does. And so it's a little hard to, you know, do that, to challenge God. But but it is okay to just wonder, like, hey, can I find reasons why? Just humbly ask the question. And for that, I will have an answer for you. And I hope that you find this helpful. Um, I wanted to say that that the earth is, like, connected to us in a, in, a, in a way. And us as humans, in Genesis 1, when God creates Adam and Eve, when he creates male and female... He gives them like dominion or authority over earth and the creatures that are on the planet that this is, this is our domain to like be fruitful and multiply, or in other words, to like fill and populate the earth with people and to run it. God delights to see us living healthy and, and godly in this world, enjoying creation and trees and plants and animals and all that kind of great stuff. But because we're sort of given authority over the world, when we fall, when we, when we sin, it's like the world falls with us. So imagine it's like this, the world and creation, animals, all that is attached to humans. And when humans jump off a cliff, the world falls off the cliff too. So I think one of the lessons for this, one of the, the reasons why the flood would affect all of creation or all of the earth and not just, not just man, is to show us that God can and will judge the world. Like to show us the extremity of the fact that God really is going to judge sin. He's really going to deal with the sins that we've committed. And it's no joke. And so he has this like sample in the past, this time when he showed his wrath so that we will know it's no joke when you stand before God on judgment day. But there's also another thing, which is to show us how bad sin is, to show us that sin affects everything around us. I think this is an important lesson. Often when we do something wrong, we think, hey, I'm, I'm doing something wrong, but I'm, I'm just affecting me. Like, who, I'm, who am I hurting other than me? But sin never really works that way. Whenever I commit sin, I'm always impacting everyone else around me in some way. I impact the world around me in some way. And so I think that the flood shows that, that, that our sin impacts and affects everyone around us in a big way. When you do something wrong, it hurts other people. That's a life lesson, you know, we all need to learn. And then the, the, the final reason is this, and this is the good news. This is where it gets beautiful and wonderful and very hopeful is that just like creation falls with us, like it's attached to us and we fall off a cliff. So when Jesus saves us and he redeems us and he raises us back up, he also raises creation back up. So creation has hope. Creation has a future. And there's a verse for this in the, in the New Testament and it's in Romans. So let me read it to us and let's consider it thoughtfully. It's going to be a bit of a challenge um, for, for some, the language here, but I think that the lesson is very wonderful. Um, it says here that the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. Or another way to put this is the, the world around us experienced things like the flood, um, death, um, hardships and pains and, and, and d like tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and volcanoes. That sort of stuff happens to the world around us, but it was, it was because of our sin ultimately, but it was subject, subjected in hope. It experiences this in hope. Why? Because the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Let me, let me say this in my own words that I'll real simplify it for us is that just like creation falls with man, creation rises with man. So that now we're waiting on the day. Jesus, when he redeems us, he doesn't just buy back us. He buys back all of the world, all of the animals and all of the things. The whole universe is, is brought back into right relationship with God. So we look forward to a day 
when everything will be remade and the universe creation, everything will be better than it, than it ever has been. We get this in second Peter talks about this. It says, keeping with this promise, we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So just like we can look back and see the cost of sin. So we can look, you know, with, with the flood and all that, we can look forward and see the incredible promises of God in that creation is going to be renewed. It'll be perfect. It'll be uh, humans, even animals, I believe, right? In, in the new creation, it, you know, existing perfectly and wonderfully and without any sin or corruption or pain or any of those sorts of things. So I hope that answers your question and hello to Miss Fuller's sixth grade class. I, I, I hope that that was been, that's been fruitful for you. I'm going to do